Okay. Trial version. We're good. Um. Trial version. Trial okay. version. If anyone's there, can you let me know if my sound is coming through? Trial version. Trial version. Trial version. Trial version. Yep. Trial version. Alright. Trial version. I think I've got the... Trial version. Positioning okay is comfortable for me. Now, Trial version. we need to get some paints. Um... Trial what version. To use for this one. Bugmans. Trial version. Trial version. Trial version. Trial version. Trial version. Mm, yep. Trial version. <sighs> Trial version. Trial version. Trial version. Trial version. I think this is probably a good unit. Trial version. Trial version. Trial version. Trial version. Welcome to trial year. version. At least I think it says one person. Trial version. Someone's there. I'm just getting my paints out at the moment. Hmm. Trial version. 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 Um, what else? Trial version. Need? Trial version. Trial version. Trial version. Did I just do that? Trial version. Trial version. <laughs> Trial version.
trial version. Trial version. Trial version. Trial version. Trial version. Trial version. Uh, that's going to have to do for trial now. Trial version. Oops. Trial version. Trial version. Trial version. Trial version. Okay. Trial version. 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 Trial version of, of what does it say? Trial version of trial version anything in particular. I don't understand what that. Trial version. Means. Trial version. Trial version. Trial version. Trial version. Trial version. I'm going to check it and see. Um whether I can see what you, what, that, trial version. what that is, because that shouldn't be happening. It didn't happen last time I tried. I'm just going to mute my sound trial for, version. The, for the moment. I can hear it on um, on mine when I check it now, but it, it's not coming through. I'm not sure where it's coming from.
Is it is it still happening? It's not happening. I have no idea what even caused that. I just Well, that was really weird. Now, I've had to move my camera. Let's see if everything's still all in the right location. All right, let's get started. Please let me know if you start hearing that again, because I do not want that happening. Even though I don't really know what caused it, it's gone away now. Thank you. All right. Uh, I haven't really decided what I'm going to to start with or how I'm going to start this one, but um, I'll figure it out as I go. Bit of a, bit of a rocky start there, but I think it seems to be okay now. <laughs>
God. Sorry about the bang a few seconds ago. I hope that wasn't too loud. Someone slammed a door in the house. If anyone's got any questions or anything, you're welcome to shoot them through. All right, I'll just uh, try and talk through and distract away, it's okay. I can try and paint and talk at the same time, that's fine. Ask as much as you want. But um, uh, the pre-shade really was um, just a, just a second. Um, sorry about that. So, uh, yeah, I am basically just, um, appreciating everything at the moment. I'm trying to think about how these colors will end up, end up, um, impacting the colors that I end up putting up, uh, on top later. I'm using a, uh, the, uh, scale 75 artist color tube for the smooth. Um, dark violet, I think it is. Yep, dark violet. And because it's already got the the um, the blue and the red on there, it really doesn't put that much of a purple into it. It's it's more just of a, a red look. And I want to end up having this one um, to have the red glow coming from underneath, like you can already see at the moment. Then. Um, so I painted it all red to start with, and then I gave it some of the blue tone from the top, the dark blue tone, um, because uh, if everything turns out the way I intend it to, uh, this model will hopefully be just a two-tone. So it'll be red from the bottom and sort of cold, um, cold, sort of bluish white colors from the top because I want it to seem like he's um he's in like a cliche corn I don't know dark 
land with like smoke filling the sky it's, it's really dark but from underneath you know there's, there's rivers of blood or whatever and so that's um that's why the shading is the way it is uh most of the blue will disappear but there may be some instances where um it will enable me to let it to show through later on. I haven't done anything specifically like this before, so it's, it is a bit of a trial or a, sh a shot in the dark. I've no idea how it's going to turn out. It'll probably end up taking a lot more work to sort it out afterwards because of that, but well, not sort it out afterwards, but sort it out during. That's the paint's too thin at the moment, but I'll, I'll roll with it because it's on the brush. The way I'm painting everything on at the moment, um, I pretty much always stipple on, like, not stipple, but instead of doing strokes, I like to be rough and it starts to create a texture underneath because I want this guy to have a sort of a rough, very rough looking skin. Probably um, do a bit more work focusing on the face at the moment. I've got a dark blue on the brush at the moment just to really offset those uh, shadow areas. I'll probably change over to the dark purple again for his mouth. I'm going to make an attempt on the eyes, or at least starting the eyes now. Um, that brush is probably okay, but I'll go to one of my other 
really fine point ones that I know is pretty good. Sorry, bumping it with my head, the camera. Mm -hmm. Just need a different paint. This is hard to do on camera. Paint isn't wet enough. Uh, yes, yes, definitely. I'll go slower and steadier and a lot smoother depending on how smooth I want the texture to be because if you build it up underneath like I do the way I was doing before, it will end up applying to the whole lot. And I've just um, made a mistake there, so I'll grab my spare brush to just erase, erase the error. There we go. Okay. I usually always do the eyes first because I find it's so important to build from there like the most important thing to me at the moment is trying to get the um, the viewer to look where I want them to look and I'll sacrifice other parts of the models to, to, to get that. Like I won't finish the feet to the same level of value contrast as the face. If that means that people will look at the face more than the feet. <laughs> but I still don't know if it's the right thing to do or not, but still it's part of the learning process. This eye is tiny.
she's at a small. I'm gonna go. bit darker for the side bit over here if it's even possible to paint that I I probably won't do the um, the black dots of the eyes on camera. It's just really very difficult to see. <laughs> so I'll keep working on the eye on the face. This is still all underpainting that I'm doing at the moment. I'm just trying to think about what, how this will affect the colors later as I go higher in value. That's too saturated, so I think that's um, Bugman's glow that, that I picked up a bit just then. Uh, this is going to be quite a big jump, but I think that's what we need now.
So that's probably still very much more pink than it, than it will end up. And this is very different to the way I would do, uh, say, a Space Marine head. Because I'm going for a totally different end look, but I still want to incorporate some of those ideas Okay, so even though that's that's quite a desaturated color, uh, Bugman's Glow for Skin, it still stands out quite a lot because of the colors that I've got, got on there at the moment. Most of the colors, the other colors that I picked are quite saturated, so I'm gonna end up doing a lot of mixing, I think. I'll try and remember to move him out of the way so you can see what I do. Um, getting blue, and then this is um, scale 75 uh, Indian shadow, I think. I'm going to do the bottom of a face with this. At least the bottom of a face that will catch the upper lights. That's a, that's a better colour. A lot of what I do involves going up a step, then down a step, then up a step, and down a step. I don't know if that makes sense, but up one step too far. Uh, I used to go um, and do the, the whole, the highlights right up to the top almost with white, with ice yellow, and this is kind of the evolution of that, I guess, but I don't go quite as far anymore. And it end up, ends up being like a, a jumping around kind of mess in the beginning, but slowly comes together Interesting. I'm going to use this light grey blue.
and it's gonna, I think it's going to end up turning out that I don't really use many of the colours that I initially chose anyway. Which means I chose poorly. That's better. Maybe it's a little bit too purple. It's okay if I have to repeat something. Always the technical issues. Uh, the light, the, the top, the light from the top will be really uh, quite close to white, I think, in the end. but it'll be about balancing that so that it, it doesn't look too bright and like a sunshiny day. Uh, and I think a lot of that balancing will come from the color choices. Thanks, Mercidius, I think. Is it right, Mercidius? I'm going to add a bit more pink back into this. It's just a little bit purple. Interesting, my mind didn't even go towards a K at all. Paint.
it's, it's interesting painting this at the moment because I've not painted something this way before specifically so I really I, I have no idea what I'm doing I'm just going with it want to get those red cheeks a bit because he's he's an angry man been drinking his blood wine Uh, I'm using Lamian Medium. I have two lots of it. So over here is um, water uh, with Lamian, a tiny bit of Lamian Medium in it. And this, this one here is just full Lamian Medium, but it'll, it'll eventually get watered down as it stays on the palette over a few days and it soaks up water through the parchment paper. Um, depending on whether I want to keep the consistency of the paint or whether I want to make it thinner, I'll grab from one or the other. Uh, it's the only medium that I really use. I love it. Works very well for me. I'm going to go much more red on his lips to start with. This is going to look really weird. Paint his slug of a tongue purple. Oh, I could even go, I could even go blue. Oh, I can make it more blue later if I, if I end up not liking it. Use this same color on the symbol for his head. But that symbol will end up almost disappearing into um, into his forehead anyway. So this is the purple color I use for his tongue just now. That now this one here is the scale 75 artist colors just purple. That's dark purple. This is purple. Um They don't get a lot of coverage over dark colors uh unless you put some other paint with them. Hi Lou. Thanks for dropping in. Mm. I 
tempted to do the corn symbol with this as well, but I think I'm not going to, but I will do I will do under his eyes. Sorry, I bumped the camera again with a very close approximation. I've just added a little bit more dark purple. This brush is nearing the end of its life. Is there enough light? Can you guys see well enough? I do have a second lamp that's not on at the moment, but last time I put that on with the video, it just blew out the color a bit too much. There's a screen to flicker, so there's not, there's no way we're going to keep that on. Hmm. All right. Hmm. It's too purple. So, I'm creating uh, some colour for his skin here. I'm not the best mixer, so I won't get it the first try. That's way too purple. But once I mix it with this one that I had earlier, I think that's going to be about right. Turned out pretty good. Now, you see this bit in his um, forehead up here, just at the top of his nose? A lot of people will leave um, the, the, little, the little creases here quite dark. And while I won't have it as light as it, it is right now, I'll probably only change it very slightly. And the difference between the colour of the brow and the top of the nose will be very, very slightly different in the end. That'll be right for about now.
whenever I make mistakes, I always got this brush sitting over here, ready to pick up and just erase mistakes. Just had some dust drift out of the tip of the brush. Tie a little bit of fur. I hate it when that happens. This crease in his face from the nose down to the top of the mouth is another one that will be similar to the one between the eyes. A lot of people leave that very dark. I find that kind of distracting personally. Um, it, it, while it is, a, it, it is a crease and it should have a shadow, it shouldn't be real, real dark. Um, there's not much paint here. Another bit of dust. There we go. Welcome, Matthew. Thanks for coming along. <laughs> if you've got any questions, shoot them through. Um, I'm feeling a bit quiet. But I do feel like I need to concentrate as well. But I'm happy to answer questions. Don't know if you guys, can you see that? There's a little rogue fiber I think I got him
Nope, he's in his mouth now. Can you see that? I think I got it that time. So let's, let's go back to the tongue. Let's try going straight this light purple colour here. Any kind of questions are fine. I just find it hard to think of things to say <laughs> while I'm concentrating on the paint. keep mixing in that spot that's where the fibers are coming from I think um, Matt I hope it's okay if I call you Matt I did not plan it out beforehand I'm just going with the flow I know what I want the end result to be I haven't painted anything this color scheme before um, so there is a lot of mixing and I'm expecting there to be because I really I, I don't know what colors I will need that bloody Sweet. Yeah, that's a good color. Nice. Yeah, definitely a lot of experimentation. I, I, I have the um, the final image in my head, and yeah, I thought it would be a good thing to stream too because. Hopefully, people will get to see me making the right choices to get where I want to go. Because it's because I I don't really know what I'm doing. With regards to this, it's all just guesswork. And I would hope that I'm starting to get to a point where I've been painting for um, getting on five, five and a half years now. 
maybe maybe it might have been getting close to six. I don't know. This year's gone very fast. Um, hopefully that experience will allow me to at least get close to the mark and not need to do a hell of a lot of adjustment. I think it's looking like it's going in the right direction. So I'm trying to think about um, making sure that I keep the blue feel of uh, the stubble that will be showing through on his chin, even though he's clean shaven. And even though this model is going to be under very specific and stark lighting circumstances I still want to have that feel to come through in the end and that's going to be complicated to achieve I think uh, so that's what I'm thinking about at the moment anyway usually I would carry this color down under his chin but I need to think about the red the red glow that's going to be coming from underneath. So I think I'm going to start to get a little bit of that in there. Um, And I'm going to, do, to use the dark purple again for it. I use this color so much. And then I'll get some of this mix and hopefully blend between the two. by doing some dots along the edge where they meet. I will probably end up coming back later and adding more red to this for sure but that'll be a um, an almost post completion stage thing These are AK Interactive 3rd Gen. Um, I've only got a few of those. They're only new, uh, newly available in Australia. I got them from Brunel Hobbies when I was in the city for a medical checkup recently. Um, I haven't really even used them. And the two, there's only two of them on the palette at the moment. That's this one here. The, which is wine red and this one here, which is dead red. I may end up putting this dark sea blue and blue violet on the palette later. I'm not sure. And maybe this brownish green, 
but they're really only sitting there because I just got them. They're, they're not really part of the palette. Not yet. I haven't used them. They're just sitting there because I haven't found where to put them in my my crazy wall of paint. Depends how I like them and how much I use them and how much I think I'll use them. I, I put the stuff that I like the most in within easy reach. You can answer for me, that's fine. If you know the answer. The great thing about red, which is the glow color that I'm going to be using for this guy, um, it's a great glazing color. It doesn't go real dirty because red doesn't get a lot of coverage. It's like yellow in that regard. Um, yellow and red are great glazing colors. So if you know you want to change something towards red or yellow, you can leave that step until later because they'll they'll tint the colors but lower it without making them dirty looking. That's a really useful thing to know. Of course it will depend on the paint you're using. surprising how much of a purple tone the skin is ending up getting even though I didn't think that was going to be the case well I didn't expect that to be the case when I picked the colors before but I'll I was in the middle of setting up streaming as well so I didn't put a lot of thought into it I just went bang, 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 bang. Okay, that'll do. And we'll work with that. And I have these colors here, which are basically the entire rainbow, and they'll allow me to create everything I want just by mixing if I need to. Uh, so I, I, I have been just working on his face, and I am going to continue, but I want to just get this little bit of his neck done so that I can have a frame for the face and know how far I need to go.
can probably tell why I go through brushes so often, <laughs> so much that this is not kind on them. Let's mm, take pink. Let's get a bit of blue. Now it's going to be too blue. Uh, I stipple, I like the control, uh, and I don't always do it, but I just do it for most things, but I feel we'll find, um, pattern useful so skin this guy's skin he's he's a rough barbarian corn warrior you know he's gonna have rough skin and so I want to stipple from the very early stages so that when I'm building up the texture I'm really incorporating that into the paint right from the, the earliest stages and so that'll contribute to the texture that will appear that it, it gives it it ends up uh, I don't know if you know you guys know about that orange peel um, kind of texture that you can get with certain spray paints on cars if it's done incorrectly I'm actually trying to build that. And yes, I don't have a lot of the paint on the brush this at at this point because I I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm just working things around slowly. Uh I'm going to make a A drastic step here I think and go back to the face depends what kind of elder Alexander <laughs> that wasn't as much of a jump as I thought. In terms of value. So I'll have to do it again.
Well, I was thinking more like a Dark Eldar, might like a... Darker kind of sweet. I don't glaze much in terms of the regular sense, but I will stipple glaze by using um, thin paint and placing dots in particular positions to create a smooth blend or make something move towards more of a smooth blend. And sometimes there's just like one, because of the way I paint dot, dot, dot all the time, sometimes there's just one little spot that's not the right colour and you just need to shift it up or down. See, that's more of a Dark Eldar thing. <laughs> this will be a much bigger jump, I think. Dead. That's what I call a cowardly guardsman. Dead. Especially if there's a commissar around. When I'm um, doing the stippling on the area where the hair will be, I leave gaps in between the dots.
Are we back? I think we're back. Sorry, guys. My PC is old. If I'm gonna do this a lot, I, I think I'm gonna have to need to upgrade it. The app that I use crashed and she's running hot. Well, that's a good sign that it's been useful so far, I guess. trying to think about his nose at the moment. This is probably going to be too much, but... So, this is where I'm going to create more of a glaze, or, or a wash almost, because I just want to get a little bit of his
the cracks around his nose to get the colour rather than the whole lot and when the paint's really thin it will automatically go there. I'm going to put some of that in his mouth too. Maybe up under here. His nose is black, full on dwarf looking, but that's okay because we're going to fix it. I think his skin is going to probably end up looking quite grey by the end. Paint is very thin.
I'm starting to get a bit closer to the the look I'm thinking of. Nose is still too red. A lot of skin work involves um, putting certain tones down in certain places and then just painting over the whole lot almost with the same colour. So you put those tones down underneath and then almost essentially tie it all together by painting the, the same colour over it everywhere which is what I'm kind of doing at the moment oh. I definitely could use a new brush this brush is almost finished I'm going to use this blue gray now. See what happens. <laughs> So again, I'm going a really big jump up uh, in the light here. This is probably too far. It's probably too much towards white. For my taste, but I like it. It looks, it looks cool.
But after I've done this step, I will go around and add some more colour into certain places and then we'll draw it all back together with that purpley greyish skin tone I've been using that has no paint colour equivalent anymore because it's all just a mix I hope you guys are all still there and I'm not just talking to myself because I haven't heard anyone comment for a while. Thanks, Murd. Sweet, sweet. You can see he's got that kind of painted clown look whiteness now. It's too much, but Still looks kind of cool. Need to get a bit more of this and put it on his chin. Um I can't really answer that, that yet, Lou. I, I've, I've only barely started using them. From what I can tell so far, they're not much different, but honestly, I've barely used them. Still my favourites are P3, but I just don't love their range of colours. I wish they had some more of the colours that I used because I... And they didn't come in those bottles with those stupid lids that always break. Okay. I haven't tried Pro Acryl. I 
Um, wall paint. If I was going to do wall paint, I'd probably do like a, a colour, but the idea I have for this guy is a, a, a very specific thing that I'd want to try and see if I can make it work. It will be pale and red and it's just going to be... Can you guys see that? See that little... Oh, I hate, anyway, I hate it. It's like always constantly pulling little bits of sh shit out of the brush. I'm pretty sure it's because the brush is old and it's just picked up a lot of dust and there's really nothing I can do about it unless I get a new brush and I keep saying that this brush is yeah it's definitely going to be corny it's a <laughs> it's meant to be a cliche corn piece deliberately cliche I got pretty lucky with that I don't know if you noticed that I had to sort of remix this, the purpley skin tone that I've been using. But I got really lucky that it turned out to be pretty much ex exactly spot on. Oh, there will be two gallons of blood, trust me. I'll show you the base. Um. <laughs> he stands here. Down here is blood, just blood. It's like a blood river. And then this little gargoyle demon face will have a stream of blood coming down, splashing into the blood river. And there'll be a splash. And yeah, so he'll be standing here. And because the blood river will go out to either side and you can see I've done the same blue and red sort of undercoat for this that I had on the initial boom and then he'll be there and all the colors will be very simply just grays blues and reds and that's it yep handmade most of it although some parts are um, from various GW kits, skulls, the skeleton, but I use paddle pop sticks. And Milliput for the for the rocks and stuff. He looks he looks a lot whiter and lighter in the camera than he does to my eye.
need to go back a bit brighter. See this line between the outside of his mouth and his chin? You want, that, you want that to be visible, but because it's almost a flat piece, it's almost not even there in the sculpt. It's gotta be real subtle. I'm going to work on that bottom lip uh, so I can get this dark purple, add it to this ongoing splotch of whatever it is here. Let's see, and I won't use um, stipples for this, will be lines. So I want the lip to have a texture. Not enough paint, this is annoying. Not as dark. Not as dark as they are. But they won't it won't be as light as the skin. And the mix is ruined again, so I'll have to redo it again. So now that it's a bit more red, I'm just going to go and hit a few spots where I feel like it will need a bit more red. That red that I put in the nose earlier is probably pretty much all gone now. There's a little bit still visible in the corner there. I don't really need to adjust that too much. Sorry, I keep bang bumping the camera with my head. Not 
Yeah, it certainly is how my wet palette becomes a war zone. Oh, God. Way too much on the brush there. <laughs> All of this just so I can do the... The blues under his eyes. In the back of his chin here isn't going to get much red so I can get away with putting a bit of the green here which will give it give us that stubble feel without betraying too much of the the red under light because if you think about it looking at it from here The light will be from below and his chest will block the, this part of his chin. redo the mix again start over because it's a color that I'm gonna have to use a fair bit I should mix a bit more of it but Should use another br a brush when I do this. Never do though. That's part of the reason why they die. Hmm. This is a different color. Yep, DIY wet palette. It's just a, a cheap $2 container with paper towel and baking paper. gonna have to do I think it's 
Yep, I sped up. to raising a mistake again. Uh, I don't don't play any tabletop games. Just painting for the sake of painting. I paint and collect. Usually I'll just pick the models that I like the look of. Whoa. Paint's falling. Go darker again.
You would think it would be a bigger difference than that. Quite remarkable. Um, hi Attila, thanks for dropping in. Um, Murd, I have painted um, Horus and Neiman Russ from Forge World, but that was a long time ago and I've come a long, long way since then, I think, and I plan... They were for other collectors, um, but I plan to paint them all for myself. Eventually, uh, I love the Primarchs, love the story, love the Horus Heresy to death. And those ones will be for my own personal collection when I finally get to them. Horus is a trader. Perhaps even the arch traitor. But then the arch traitor title probably belongs to Lorga. Or Erebus or Corfaron. Thanks, I, I can't wait to paint them. I'll have to allow some time to do it at some point. I keep putting them off because I want to be a better painter by the time I I do them because I want to do the best I possibly can. I'm sure I'm not the only one who does that. So did I. I got the um, scenic base for Sanguinius as well. It's just going to be difficult to choose between the sword and the spear. I probably will use the sword, but sometimes the spear is appealing as well.
Now I just don't want to put it off forever because I don't know, I think I'll probably end up doing Gilliman first because um, he's probably the, the, the model out of all of them that I like least. Uh, yes, a lot of things, <laughs> um, the near future, uh, I've got, um, a few Spira Mirabilis busts on the, the near future list, and I've got the High Elf from the, um, The, the, the eagle flying um, kit with the banner. I love the new release from Spira, the Seven Dwarves. And I've got Gazkul all prepped and ready to go as well and a base for him, He's, he will hopefully, I'll get the time to set aside for him soon also, love that model. I don't mind Gilliman as a character, I just think GW holds him on a bit of a pedestal, but I wish they would um, hurry up and release the rest of the Primarchs in the 40k verse. I know not everyone wants that to happen, but at least if it's the Demon Primarchs who are definitely still alive. Yeah, I hope so. I've, I'm making a pretty cool base for him too. I'm also doing a... Um, a Dark Hunters diorama. Primaris Dark Hunters. That's going to be cool. Five, it's a kill team. Um, and I'm planning this big sisters of battle diorama with like 13 or 15 models on it that's probably going to take a few years to finish though but that's in the planning stages at the moment that should be really cool Yeah, Gill Gilliman's got a, a lot of the weight on his shoulders now, mm. though, in the Dark Imperium. All by himself.
I just love the original trilogy in the Horus Heresy so much that the way it's all written and the way it goes down and the 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 loss of Horus it's uh that is it's sort of it goes both ways it depends on what's happening at the time and how much how much I have to get done by deadlines, uh, how much open-ended time I have, what I feel like doing sometimes. If I split work on a day, I'll, I'll spend the morning um, working on bases and building and doing prep work on models, depending on what needs to be done, and then the afternoon painting the same project. Usually when I'm painting something I only paint one thing at a time although there are a lot of projects that I have done to a particular point and are waiting on their bases to be built more before I paint more Almost like dry brushing with a very wet brush without much paint on it at the moment. Anyone else looking forward to Cyberpunk? That is really white. That was a much bigger difference than I thought. It's only four more days. Four and a half. They won't delay it again, not this close. But it might almost be worth waiting six months to play it because it'll be a different game.
Yeah, I have this. I have the same sort of feeling. I I, I want to play it. I don't want to play it now, but I really hope it's not too buggy when it comes out because I'm definitely going to play it on release date. If it's if it's very buggy though, I'll probably see about waiting. There's probably plenty of other stuff to play. Or if it's good enough and seems like the kind of thing that I would like to play multiple times. Might be worth playing through now and then going at it again. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to choose Corpo the first time. I'm sort of planning to play the game, making decisions the way I feel like I would make them myself the first time. And being an ex-corpo who really dislikes corporate environment because of the experiences I had there. I think it would be interesting to play it out with that perspective and those kind of ideas in mind. <laughs> Where did I miss Adam? Yeah, Nomad's my second choice. So I've been working on skin for ages and I thought um, I've only got about 45 minutes left. I'm wondering whether you guys would like to see me try power through some non-metallic metals on the axe over here.
Okay. It's not much different to this, it's just um, color choice and placement. Just got to think about how you want to do things. Very carefully, especially in this case, it's going to be a, a, a challenge because I don't want to go outside the main color. The main color choices that I've done so far, too far. Um, that's still probably too good of a brush. Okay, so now this will be an interesting thing to think about. So when I make my choices for non-metallic metal, it's all about trying to push the, the viewer to the face. So I think most people would do a highlight up here. And I do think it needs it, but I think this section here is probably more likely to have the light I want. Uh, so I'm going to just put the red in. Yeah, the reason I don't want to put the the main highlight on the axe blade up here is because it's so far away from him. I mean, it's it's in line, so I will do some bit of a highlight up there, but probably not a huge one. Now, flat surfaces are really interesting to paint through for non-metallic metal. See, see when I turn that this flat surface here. It's quite contiguous, like, so I'll probably end up doing this whole area quite bright. Yep, it will be posted as a video later. No. I'm 
gonna have to re. Uh, in this case, I'm kind of lucky, or not lucky, but this guy's got a. His corn, his, his axe isn't really well taken care of, so I don't need to make it smooth. Yeah, that's it. And so I think it makes sense for the, the lighter part of this axe head out here to be the brightest. But then when I'm highlighting later, I'll make this part of the axe the rounded areas, just this little bit here and here and here, just that little bit brighter than over here in terms of value. And just another crash. Apparently my phone, which is the camera, is running out of battery. It's plugged in. I think... If it um, goes away again... I'll end up having to end the stream then because that'll be the battery running out. I'm not sure what I can do about that. Maybe, yeah, that's going to be a PC upgrade thing too as well because I've only got the old, like, my computer's 11 years old. I've only got old, I think, USB 1 ports on the front. It's probably not providing enough power.
But the biggest key factor in non-metallic metals is making sure that the jump from dark to light happens in a in a small area and so you have lots of or you try to have dark colors next to light colors So just a warning to everyone who's watching, if the battery runs out on the, on the camera, it'll probably just cause the screen to freeze again. And because my, my phone is my microphone as well, I'll have to just end the stream there, I think. So I'll probably just let it keep going as, as long as it lasts. And thanks to everyone who's come along. Very much appreciate everyone who's been watching. happens. You know when you paint over an area too soon before it's dried and it wipes it away and leaves that little kind of divot area that just won't take paint? There we go, hair dryer did it. So um, light sources, <sighs> NMM is very complex and there's a lot of choices that need to be made. Like I was saying um, before, I choose, there's, there's a lot of ways that you can make 
your your highlight flashes but usually you have your certain shapes so see that the cylinder of this axe means that there'll be a highlight running down this whole area here and that's the main one because the main light source is is here and so well the main light source is coming basically from this direction you might think it should be on the inside but because i'm always trying to think about pulling the viewer towards the face or the, the main viewing area that i want i will rotate that highlight a little bit so that it's more facing towards him uh, and I make a lot of those choices when painting non-metallic metals. Basically, if you don't know the direction to place the highlight in, like if you've got a flat surface that can have the highlight on outside here or inside here, I usually just choose to put that highlight facing towards the face or the highlight closest to the face so that you're getting that. attention drawing part to it and in a lot of cases for for like a dark metal this is probably much too much too white I'm, I'll probably end up changing it but for now it's okay for dark metal you can just you can almost get away with doing a blend like from red to this level of gray, and that's enough. As long as you do edge highlights. And the edge highlights can be jumped almost all the way up to white. Um, I'll be posting photos of my dark angel soon but I've got him oh no I don't have him on my desk just give us a second I'll grab him this guy all of the locations of the highlights are pointing to the face on the sword, the top side of the sword in this corner, the lightest up here. Um, this is the front view, so I didn't want to make the, I, I didn't want to make the point up here light, even though it's closer to the face technically, or maybe not, maybe this corner is, but if you put the highlight in the top of this corner it, it creates an arrow going this way and subliminally that'll make the, the viewer look away uh, then there's this isn't non-metallic metal but if you were going to paint this in non-metallic metal the, the similar ideas here the, the the lightest highlight is actually on the bottom of this this blade because it's closest to his face. And then what I was talking about, the dark colors on the, on the, on the bolter, see how it's mostly just dark gray and I've done light edge highlights. The same with the key, just a light edge light highlight there, 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 this chain. And then what I was talking about going from dark to light, see the, the skull, the skull here, it's quite dark and then boom, light. See that? And then with the sword, you've got the dark side, the shadow side here, which is quite dark. Get a little bit lighter at the bottom here because it's getting some reflected gray from the ground, getting some re red reflected from the inside of his cloak here from the dark section, but then light up here, which is next to the darks over here.
and then yeah he's got some firelight coming from this side at the back of the sword which is an off angle so you can really do whatever you want with with that I just wanted there to be um, this section here to be brighter so it pulls you to make you want to go like turn it like this and go back to the front I try to think about that a lot when I'm painting things on the back like what is going to make the viewer want to turn it and turn it back to the front because the back's the back you know I also just finished um, the Akito bust yesterday. I'll grab that and show you guys as well before we run out of time. I still have mixed thoughts about the idea of this model, the, the things that I've chosen to do. It's not a big rare and show off model, but can you see the texture on the jacket? That's, that's built up from the bottom using stippling. And then I, tried to do the, the Nico Galaxy cat on her jacket in dark blue colours and that's the back again. So I want this to be the focal point. And then you've got the non-metallic metal on the blade that can also be a focal point at the back because it's the back, you know, what do you want? people to look at at the back and yeah, then I went crazy trying to um, get some really smooth blends on the skin for this one that's that one Knocked it over. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, no, no, I didn't. Not, not exactly. Not happy. Just um, um. still processing the choices that I made with it. If that makes sense. I haven't decided whether I like it yet. <laughs> I'll need to sleep on it. So, it's four o'clock and I've been going for three hours. Um, I may just leave it here, I think, guys and girls. If there's any there, I really appreciate you all coming. Oh, I'm off the, I'm off the camera. Bloody.
Thank you heaps for all hanging out, asking questions. Uh, keep an eye out for when this guy finishes. Hopefully I'll be able to achieve the, the look that I want for him. I hope it's been helpful. I don't know whether... I hope it makes sense what I was saying and... Thanks very much for hanging out and I'll catch you later guys. Yeah, I think next time I'd stream I'll be focus I'll do a I'll do one that focuses on gold non-metallic metal which is something I'm feel confident about, something that I know what I'm doing. See that wall of paint that I was telling you about? Woo.